The Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact was named after both the Soviet Foreign Minister Vyacheslav Molotov and the Nazi Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop, respectively. The alliance between the Nazis and the Soviets was merely a pact of convenience, however. This was proven to be true as Hitler would go on to attack the Soviet Union 22 months later after its signature on the 23rd of August 1939. The world was shocked with such an alliance however, as both countries had completely different ideologies. One was communist and the other was fascist. We now know that there was no love loss for the communists in Germany as it was evident in the Reichstag fire decree of 1933. It is speculated that the Reichstag fire was manufactured by the Nazis to wipe out any opposing viewpoints and gain complete power. He used this decree to wipe out the German communists and other political opponents without trial or charge to assume complete power as the dominant political force in Germany. It is said that Hitler was scrambling to create the so-called alliance because he wanted to be free to attack Poland without the interference of its neighbor in the east, the Soviet Union, as the army was ready to attack Poland on August the 25th. That's why the pact was so significant. It gave the Nazis free reign to grab Poland, although it wasn't completely free. The war did come at a price. Hitler believed that with Russia out of the conflict, the Western allies would get cold feet and would not intervene. History shows us a completely different reality however. The pact was especially important for Hitler's generals since they argued that Germany could never win a war on two fronts. The Soviets were happy to join this alliance as it enabled them to get the land they had lost from Poland during the Russian Civil War. The Treaty of Versailles made no mention of the Eastern territories and as such Poland invaded the territories ceded by the Russians in the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk. The Soviet goal was primarily to unite the Belarusian and Ukrainian majorities to their respective republics. The cynical pact had a secret protocol that outlined both Soviet and Nazi spheres of influence in Eastern Europe, Eastern Poland, Estonia, Latvia and Finland as well as Bessarabia. It is assumed that Stalin wanted to create a buffer between the Soviet Union and Germany so that they would have time to prepare in case of an attack from the Nazis. The Baltic states would give them an excellent strategic vantage, vantage point to see any German attack coming. Eastern Poland would give them a wide breadth in case they were attacked by the Germans from the west. The pact was significant because both the Soviets and the Germans pledged that they would stay out of any alliance that wasn't beneficial to either party as well as staying neutral if either country was attacked by a third party. The Germans in return for all machinery would receive large amounts of oil from the Caucasus region and rubber from the far east via the Trans-Siberian Railroad as well as foodstuffs from the breadbasket of Europe, Ukraine. Being that the Germans were landlocked during World War II, this was a vital alliance for the Germans since they wouldn't be able to obtain these vital resources otherwise. The Soviets would also act as an intermediary for the Germans obtaining rubber for them in exchange for blueprints of the battleship Bismarck. In total, the Germans received 1 million tons of cereals, half a million tons of wheat, 900,000 tons of oil, 100,000 tons of cotton, 500,000 tons of phosphates, and considerable amounts of other vital raw materials along with the transit of 1 million tons of soybeans from Manchuria. The Soviets received oil and electric equipment, locomotives, turbines, generators, diesel engines, ships, machine tools, and samples of German artillery, tanks, explosives, chemical warfare equipment, and other items. Goering being that he was Minister of Economics to this Defense Minister and the Minister of Agriculture constantly demanded more resources from the, from the Russians. However, Stalin the ardent negotiator that he was would demand huge voluminous amounts of resources in exchange, materials that the Germans couldn't provide if they planned to continue waging war. On the 1st of September, the Germans invaded Poland from the west. They made short work of the Polish defenders given that the Germans had more tanks, artillery and planes. 15 days after Germany's invasion, the Soviets invaded from the west. On September the 27th, the Poles surrendered. 16 days after Germany invaded, the Soviets invaded from the east and met minimal resistance as most of their troops were fighting the Nazis from the west. The Poles didn't see the attack coming. 
Stalin justified the attack as he claimed that since the Polish government was no longer in power, their non-aggression pact was no longer valid. A very cynical view as the Polish government was forced to flee their country as a direct consequence of the Nazi-Soviet pact. Following the invasion of Poland, the Soviets realizing that the Eastern Poland's that the Eastern Poles would be hard to control because of the Poles' hatred for the Russians. Knowing this, Stalin opted to give a large chunk of Poland from their sphere of influence to the Germans in exchange for most of Lithuania. Now, the Russians would have a much stronger strategic position in case of German aggression. Following the wide-scale purge of the 1930s, he needed time to prepare for a war as he knew Russia wasn't ready in 1939 or 1940. In 1941, the Soviets were also smack in the middle of a major overhaul, attempting to modernize their obsolescent military equipment and bring it in line with the needs of modern warfare, as demonstrated by the German blitzkrieg tactics to invade Poland. That effort had just started and they figured it would last through at least 1943 or 1944. If you look at the Red Army's experience in the Winter War against Finland, they had serious problems in doctrine, training and leadership. Hitler regarded the German-Soviet non-aggression pact as a tactical and temporary maneuver. He never intended to uphold the terms of the agreement for 10 years. His long-range plan had always been for German forces to attack the Soviet Union and establish Lebensraum for the Germans in the territories they had seized. Before taking this step, however, Hitler intended to subdue Poland and defeat France and Great Britain. The non-aggression pact allowed Germany to fight these intermediate wars without fear of a Soviet attack, thereby avoiding a two-front war. In July 1940, one month after Germany defeated France, Hitler ordered preparations for war against the Soviet Union. German diplomats worked to secure Germany's flank in Southeast Europe. In November 1940, Hungary, Romania and Slovakia joined the Axis alliance. During the spring of 1941, Hitler initiated his European allies into plans to invade the Soviet Union. On December 18, 1940, Hitler signed Directive 21, the first operational order for the invasion of the Soviet Union. From the beginning of operational planning, German military and police officers intended to wage a war of annihilation against what they saw as the Soviet Union's Judeo-Bolshevik communist government as well as Soviet citizens, particularly the Jews. Here's my conclusion. The Nazi-Soviet pact was born out of necessity for both countries as the Soviets and the Germans felt that Poland's borders were unacceptable for both, as the Poles had taken advantage of the Russians' internal turmoil during the Russian Civil War to grab more territory. The Germans felt wronged because they had lost Danzig and the Polish corridor, which hampered their ability to connect with East Prussia. Thus, Poland's frontiers were unacceptable to both countries and war was inevitable. The alliance was more essential for Germany than the Soviets, as they needed the raw materials the Russians could provide because of the British blockade. Once Poland was out of the way, Hitler was able to realize his lifelong ambition of Operation Barbarossa as outlined in his book Mein Kampf. His motivations were to make Germany self-sufficient. He would be able to accomplish this by conquering the Soviet Union, which in the end, he failed to do so. It is speculated that Stalin agreed to the alliance with Germany so that he would be able to rebuild his army 